morning. Hello. Welcome to our February cooking class. Um, glad to see y'all made it out. It's still raining outside. Y'all yeah, know? But it's real foggy. I appreciate you coming out on not such a nice evening. So hopefully we'll be able to share some things that will be beneficial to you and get to taste some things so you don't get to go home and make it for the first time and think, oh, I didn't really like that as well as I thought. So our whole, whole kind of purpose here. Um, so did anybody use any of the soup recipes from last month? Try any of those soup things? Yes? You did? Okay. I got the butternut squash, remember? The butternut squash, yeah. She used her butternut squash. So someone came up to me after the class last month and said, you know, that butternut squash could be really improved. I've done it if you add a little bit of maple syrup to it. So if you like the butternut squash, you might add a tablespoon of maple syrup to it and see if that helps it if you didn't think it was your favorite at that time. So somebody had said that, but I think I did. Okay, good. I think it, you know, a tablespoon would be fine. So um, we've got our same sort of crew here, you know, Jared. Oh. He's been down in the kitchen working all day, getting all the things ready for us. Um, Lynetta is with us tonight too. Um, and she'll be doing the first recipe. And then I also would like to introduce a couple of new folks to you. Uh, Melissa Hartley, uh, she is a dietetic intern with us, and so she's going to do one of the recipes as well. So um, she did a group earlier today. This is a little bit bigger group than she did earlier today. So um, she'll be doing the, the second recipe with you. And then also would like to introduce to you, we will have a new dietitian. Today is her very first day, uh, but she will be working with us in the March cooking class, Misha Cowan is going to join us as a dietitian here at CMH. So, uh, today's her first long day because she stayed around to, to see what cooking class was all, uh, all about. So, um, you know, today we're going to do hearty casseroles. February is heart month. Heart month. Yeah. How'd you know we chose that topic because it's heart month? Um, because you told so, us last month. I did? <laughs> Gosh, and you remember? I didn't remember I told you. Uh, I do want to just remind you, if you're not aware of what uh, CMH does have uh, for patients that had some heart issue or heart disease, we do the cardiac rehab uh, sessions here just across the hall. Uh, they have a phase two and a phase three program. They told me today that they really have lots of participation in their phase three program, which is um, a service that you do pay, but you come in and do exercises there in uh, the cardiac rehab area um, and I've got some cards about I'll leave them at the, the table you can pick them up on the way out if you're interested in that phase three program really good supervised they've got new equipment coming in uh, they are here now five days a week Monday through Friday um, some of you previously may have known that they just did sessions on Monday Wednesday Friday and now they do sessions on Tuesday, Thursday as well. So if you need a place to exercise and be supervised by nursing personnel, it's a great place. And they told me that you really have fun. We do. So uh, that's, that's going on just across um, the hall. They also do education classes, cardiac education. We're involved in those some. They do some additional things uh, related to heart disease and how you can improve your health. Uh, those education sessions that they offer are free and open to the public as well. So if you have questions about that, the phone number is on this and you can call them about when their education classes are also set up. Um, so, you know, heart health is really close to our hearts as dietitians. Uh, we'd like to help you make your food more healthy so that it makes your heart more healthy. So. Um, Lynetta is going to share with you the first recipe, the garden veggie egg bake, right? That's right. All right. So when we're talking about heart health, what are some of those nutrients that we're, we often tell people or people hear that they need to be careful about? And so this is where audience participation is. What did you say, hun? Salt. Salt. What else? Sure. Fat. All right, salt and fat are the two biggies. And if, if and for folks who do have diabetes, that increases your risk of heart disease. So you certainly do want to be mindful of your carbohydrate or your sugar. And so, um, so with this first recipe, um, this garden veggie egg bake, that's what we were thinking about. We were thinking about ways that not only can we make this delicious 
and you know still tastes like an egg casserole, but how could we reduce the salt or the sodium content? And how could we reduce that saturated fat? That's that kind of fat that increases our risk of heart disease. And so I'll, I'll share with you a couple of the ways that we did that. So if you look at this recipe here, um, of course it starts out with eggs. And so we took uh, some of those eggs and we used that egg substitute. That egg substitute has got a little bit less saturated fat in it. It's going to be lower in cholesterol. So we were able to bring that total fat content down. Um, we also chose um, to reduce the sodium content by being very careful about how much cheese was in this recipe and by not putting in too much salt. And so I don't even think this recipe says salt and pepper to taste. Um, of course, if you need it to be a little bit more salty and you're not concerned about you know, your heart health, um, you know, you've not got a risk factor for that, then maybe you know, put a little bit more salt on it at the table. But for those of you that are watching your sodium content, this is a great recipe. Um, I compared it to a uh, egg bake um, casserole with sausage, cheese, and potatoes. Has anybody had that kind of dish before? Yeah, a couple? Um, uh, this recipe has half the salt in it. And so we were able to half the salt by making a couple easy swaps. We're also able to cut the saturated fat down by half. And so those, those small tweaks make a big, big difference. Another thing that I loved about this recipe was that it included so many fresh vegetables. And so it gave it a little bit of color. Um, and so uh, I know Jared's going to be talking about this a little bit later. But you know, if you're not a big fan of zucchini, um, you could swap this vegetable out for others. So get some color in there. Use some bell peppers. Um, you see we've got uh, broccoli in here, spinach. Uh, you know, you can switch up those vegetables with what you've got. Um, you can use frozen. It doesn't have to be fresh. And so a lot of a lot of great ways to get your uh, vegetable needs in the day. And so um, you all might have heard of this uh, phrase. You know, you, you want to get five, right? Five fruits and vegetables. Well, if you start out breakfast this way, you're already almost there. And so good way to get some color and some freshness to your plate. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, but those are some tips about that recipe. Easy to make the night ahead. Uh, put it in the fridge. Bake it in the oven in the morning. I think it reheats pretty well. Uh, it's a great recipe if you're going to have family come over. Um, it mixes up pretty easily. So, pretty salty. Yeah, I mean, huh? It's plenty salty. Yours is pretty salty? All right. And so you can cut down even more on that salt. Well, I think yeah. that's... The cheeses, a lot of times your cheese will have some salt. In that, that pepper jack cheese, that cheddar cheese and that Romano, you absolutely, you could cut back on that even more. And if you didn't have all those fancy cheeses, um, you know, you could certainly use a cheddar cheese. Or if you don't want cheese on it at all, you can take that off. And so you certainly don't have to put the cheese on it. Yeah, it's good enough. All right. Uh, actually, last Friday, um, we did a, uh, a banquet in here for all the managers for a, a seminar they had to go to. Um, and it's really basically the same recipe that I used for that, um, except just the vegetables are switched out. Um, and so we did broccoli and spinach, um, uh, some diced onion, a little bit of garlic, um, and some roasted uh, butternut squash. Um, with, with these type of egg bakes or frittatas, um, or crustless quiche, some call them. Um, they're really, really versatile on what you can do. The only thing you have to watch out for is the vegetables that you put in it. Um, it usually works a lot better if you don't cook those ahead of time. Okay, let them cook in in the egg itself. Okay, um, in the casserole. Because um, a lot of times, if you if you cook them ahead of time, they're going to get really mushy. Um, they're not in the oven that long, so they're not going to turn to mush if you've got them. Uh, fresh. So, and make sure that you cut them up nice and small, bite-sized pieces. Um, when, I'm, when I'm training people on, on salad bar and cutting up, uh, prepping things like this, I always tell them if you can't, if you can't get it in your mouth in one bite, then cut it down until you can. So. Does anybody like a little heat with their breakfast casseroles? You like a little spice to it? A couple? All right. So um, a couple of tricks about getting a little heat in your food without too much sodium is just choosing, you know, just a, a dry mix that has the sodium free. There's a lot of them out there. You can use red pepper flakes. Um, if you've ever gone out for pizza, you know those little red pepper flakes you get in the pizza box. 
You can use those in, the, in this recipe. Um, what we have here, and it's optional, because I know a lot of people don't like hot and spicy, is a quarter teaspoon of hot pepper sauce. That has a lot of sodium in it. If you've ever looked at those hot, you know, Tabasco sauce bottles, it's got a lot of salt in it. So that might be an area that you want to be careful with. You're not going to get a very much, just a teaspoon, but um, if you're being very careful about your sodium intake, that would be one that maybe I wouldn't use, and I'd use the red pepper flakes instead. How do y'all like it? It's good? All right. I hope, I hope some of y'all make this between now and March. All right. Next up, we've got veggie tuna noodle casserole. You probably smell it. Um, I hope you like it. This is Melissa. Thanks, Lynetta. Are you all enjoying your veggie bake? Your veggie bake? Oh, good. Well, while you're enjoying that, I'll start talking about the veggie tuna noodle casserole. You'll notice that veggie is a common theme throughout these recipes. Whenever we can add in those extra veggies, we always love to do that for all their health benefits. How many of you enjoy tuna noodle casserole and eat it a lot? Yeah? A few of you? Good. Yeah, it's a really, really common dish. And that's what I love about this recipe is it's taking a common dish, just making a few changes to make it even healthier. And so what's different about this tuna nita casserole is we're adding more veggies to it. Specifically, we're adding zucchini to it. And so at the beginning when you're making the recipe, the first thing you do is you first saute some zucchini in olive oil. And then you set that aside, and then you do your typical assembly that you do with tuna nita casserole. Combine your tuna with your cooked noodles. And with this recipe, we're using mayonnaise and sour cream and then some different seasonings. And then once you get that all laid, or all mixed together, you'll then layer it. So you'll layer a little bit of your tuna mixture, and then you'll place some of that sautéed zucchini on top. You'll layer some more of the tuna mixture, and then finish it off with some of that zucchini on top, and then finish it off with cheese. So it's a really simple modification, but adding that zucchini adds a lot of vitamin C, adds a lot of um, fiber as well. And speaking of heart health, that fiber, can really, really benefit our hearts. And the more fiber that we have, that we take in, that's been shown to lower our LDL cholesterol, which is the cholesterol we want to watch out for if we're worried about our heart. So adding in those extra vegetables, adding in that fiber, can really, really benefit our hearts. Um, and looking at the nutritional information for this recipe, you'll notice that it has 17 grams of fat in it. We will notice, I believe it's only seven of them. Let me look, make sure I'm not making things up. Yeah, so only six, only six grams of those total 17 is saturated fat. So that means 11 grams of the fat in this recipe are those heart healthy fats. There are fats that are good for our heart, that are healthy for our heart. And a lot of these come from, from the tuna. Tuna is another really good thing for our heart. Has a lot of those omega-3s in it that are gonna help with inflammation and support our heart health. There's a lot of good things already going on with this recipe. There's lots of um, other vegetables you could add to your tuna nuna casserole. Um, you could put shredded carrots in with it. If you like peas, you could put that in there. There's other vegetables as well that you could put into it that will make it even more healthier for you. Um, another thing we've done with this recipe for, to support heart health is you'll notice we're using olive oil to saute the celery in as well as the zucchini. And this is an oil that's, again, a healthy fat that's going to help help our heart as well. Um, Jared, any tips that you have on the, the preparation of this recipe that you want to share? Um, yeah, like you said with vegetables, um, be creative. Um, I always tell people, if, if, if you're tired of making the same tuna noodle casserole, then add something different to it. Um, you know, most of the time this is a little bit different. Um, you know, there's no peas and carrots in it, which I know for me, peas and carrots are always in a tuna noodle casserole, right? Um, and onions. I noticed every, every recipe today has no onions in it. It was weird. Really, really weird. So um, that's something that you generally see in casseroles. It's garlic, onion, uh, carrots, celery, you know, those staple vegetables to get started with. Um, and, and you can go in and you can do other different types of zucchini. You can do squash. Um, you can do butternut squash. Uh, just remember that if it's anything, if it's any type of vegetable that is that is going to be difficult to heat ahead of time, um, you'll either want to cut it smaller or cook it up ahead. Like you'll want to roast um, butternut squash, right? You'd want to roast that up ahead of time before you add it to the recipe. Um, in this case, sauteing the, uh, uh, the zucchini 
uh, before you cook it. And honestly, you don't have to saute those zucchinis if you cut them small enough. Um, you don't want to cut them in nice big wedges. Um, you don't want to cut them nice and small. Um, I brought a zucchini just to kind of show. Oh, zucchinis are. <laughs> it's. We did a, a, a demonstration this last uh, month in our in service on knife safety, right? Because that's really important to teach people. Um, and one of the things that I talked about was when cutting fruits and vegetables, cut them in a way that there's a flat surface for you to operate off of, right? Um, the good thing about zucchini is a lot of times they are round, but if you look at them, they do have almost a box style to them. Uh, the bigger they get, the, the more that goes away, um, but they are a little bit easier to kind of lay flat so you can make, so you can make nice um, cuts out of them. But you're going to want to keep those fairly thin, uh, about a quarter of an inch. Um, and like we say every time, consistency is key. Um, it makes for even cooking and even um, taste profile, so you want to make sure that you keep those nice and even all the way through. Um, Zucchini is really easy to cut. Uh, you can also use a mandolin to cut them, um, which I don't, I don't think I've ever found one that actually worked properly for me, and it may just be because I'm really difficult. I'm left-handed, you know, so everything's backwards to me. So, you know, some things they make for left-handed people like me, but other things they don't. So, um, and, and the other thing is when you are slicing vegetables and cutting things like that, Operate at your comfort. Don't don't try to get all crazy and chop things super fast. It's really easy to cut yourself when you're when you're operating above your your ability. You know. So there it is. Perfect. Thank you, Jared. Have you all got a chance to try it? How do you like it? Good. Yeah. Jared, I see lots of head nods and thumbs up. Does he have a use for that zucchini? No. Do you have a use for the zucchini? A use for the zucchini? Yes. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Good, I'm glad that you're enjoying it. Uh, one more thing that I'll say about this recipe before I hand the mic off is another thing that we've done with this recipe for heart health is you'll notice that we use reduced fat sour cream and reduced fat mayonnaise. And so again, that's reducing that saturated fat or reducing that fat that has a negative impact on our heart. A lot of tuna needle, tuna needle casserole recipes might call for like a, a soup base, like a cream soup base. And if you look at the labels of those, they'll have a lot of sodium in them as well. So using the reduced fat mayonnaise and reduced fat sour cream instead of some type of soup mix is another way that we make this recipe more heart health. So I hope that you all continue to enjoy it. And I will hand the mic off for our next one. So when you have a lot of zucchini in your garden this summer, and doing a new tuna noodle casserole with zucchini. Um, our next rest, I'll tell you a couple things, uh, kind of housekeeping things. You notice that we're at round tables tonight. Um, we increased the number of seats that we had for cooking class because we continue to be uh, full every month. And so we did increase the number of people that we are allowing to register so in order to do that this was the best seating arrangement for it so we probably will continue the round tables so uh, if you have a select group you want to sit with you need, you need to, to tell them you're going to sit at table number five or wherever so uh, we'll continue probably with this uh, room setting you know for the rest of the year so um, the other thing that um, we'll let you know about is uh, the next recipe is the heart healthy taco casseroles. Anybody not like taco casseroles? Everybody does? I thought everybody did. So uh, we're going to be doing a taco casserole. Uh, and of course, this one we use, the recipe uses ground turkey, and that helps reduce that fat. So that's kind of one of those things you've heard. The other two talk about is to make it heart healthy, we try to do things that have less fat. So our ground turkey would have less fat. You could still use a lean ground beef, um, and it, it would still not be probably too much. We, you know, we tend to still use a lot of beef, I think, in this area. My encouragement would be to try to get it as lean as possible uh, and, and prepare it that way. Um, the other big thing is, of course, the sodium. 
So how many of you um, end up buying some kind of taco seasoning at the grocery store whenever you get ready to do a taco casserole or anything that's a Mexican kind of thing? So um, taco seasonings tend to have, that are already prepared, tend to have quite a bit of sodium. You know, we've talked about sodium. So two teaspoons of this particular brand um, has 300 milligrams of sodium per two teaspoons, okay? So it's about 150 per teaspoon. So many times at my house, I don't really measure it, I just sprinkle it. So I'm sure I'm getting more than two teaspoons. Anybody else do that? And probably if you get the packets, there's probably a little bit more than two teaspoons in those packets. So again, you could read the label on the smaller packets and see how much sodium there is in the prepared seasoning mixes. So, you know, what we usually suggest is we're looking at, if you're trying to reduce your sodium intake, is that I kind of advise that you want to do about 2,000 milligrams of sodium a day, or up to 2,400 is still considered fairly low sodium diet. So, I usually take that 2,000 divided by three and come up with between six and 700 per meal. Um, so if I use, say, four tablespoons of this, you know I'm getting 600 right here with this. That means I can't have any other sodium in whatever meal. So looking at this rest of the taco recipe, um, I want you to look at the fact that there's a lot of the seasonings in there, and then we do not really have a lot of sodium. So if you look at the no at salt added tomato sauce to start, uh, instead of getting the good old regular tomato sauce, you're going to help that way as well in reducing your sodium. And then, of course, you have all the different seasonings. And I just brought some of mine that I used when I tried it the other night. So you may have these staples in your, your kitchen already. Chili powder. Everybody got chili powder? Everybody got a cumin? Yeah. Everybody got onion powder? I have the big one of onion powder at my house. And then garlic powder and paprika tiny bit of sugar and cayenne. Now, I did leave out the red pepper flakes because I'm not like Lynetta, and I don't like hot stuff, but you could certainly put those in. Um, and it still was plenty spicy for me. So through all of those ingredients, that's your enchilada sauce that you make, that you put on uh, your taco, your meat mixture, okay? So you get that all ready to go. You can have that you know, ready to go ahead of time, or it doesn't really take that long to mix it up, just, you know, measure and dump, measure and dump, uh, to make your enchilada sauce. Um, you start out by putting, by putting your chips in the bottom of your pan, um, and we did figure the analysis based on good old regular tortilla chips, uh, because there just seems to be the no salt ones are hard to find. So this did take into account that we were using regular tortilla chips, uh, we did use no added salt corn, did drain it, so you can get no added salt corn. And then you can also get a no salt added beans, and this just happens to be the kind of beans that I use. And the recipe does suggest that you take those beans and you put them in your food processor to kind of mush them all up. I did that, and that was fine. I think you could also do it without doing that. Jared, what do we do for tonight? Would we mush them? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you can leave it you, whole. You, I thought you could leave yeah. them whole too, but I was trying to really follow the direction from the recipe. Yeah. I, I actually almost left them whole, just for the simple purpose of you can try it mushed, or you can try it this way, and that way you have an option and you can kind of see what uh, what it turned out like. Um, so then you you know you put your uh, talk, you put your chips in, you put your. Uh, ground turkey mixture in, then you put your corn and you light, and then you kind of layer it, and then put your beans in, and then put some more um, chips on top, and then you pour your enchilada sauce that you made from the the top part of the recipe, and then sprinkle cheese on it. And another key is, of course, not dump lots of cheese on it. That would increase your sodium uh, content in the overall recipe. So be limited on that cheese. What kind of cheese do we use for this one tonight? What was in the recipe? The recipe says, suggests using Monterey Jack. Monterey Jack. Yeah. I tried. I did it with cheddar. So you could do kind of whatever your favorite cheese mixture is or whatever you happen to have on hand. I think would be fine. I think the key is not doing too much of it, trying to stay at that one cup. So this total recipe, if you do one cup of it, 
has a total of 240 milligrams of sodium. Remember, we get 300 if we do two teaspoons of this. If you were to purchase an um, enchilada sauce, you know, already done at the grocery store, um, one fourth cup of this has 290. So by the time you get four servings out of it, you've got about 1,200 milligrams of sodium in this can. So maybe this one can's not quite enough and use two. So we really added a lot of sodium when we can make our own enchilada sauce with the no added salt tomato sauce and add our, our seasoning and our spices to it. So have I convinced anybody? How's it taste? Pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. It's really pretty good. I had my leftovers today for lunch. I would I would encourage you to use things like ground turkey, um, ground beef and reflect or ground pork um, in place of ground beef. Um, just for that simple fact, um, it's you really can't tell the difference. Um, I've had really picky people uh, for church dinners and things like that, and I would make enchiladas and burritos and stuff like that with ground turkey. Um, and when I told them afterwards that it was ground turkey, they didn't believe me. So, um, you know, if you're mixing against something. Now, if you were to go down there and, and eat the ground turkey after I cooked it, yes, you would say, there is no way that I would be able to eat this. Um, it's not bad, but the texture of it is just, it's different. It's really, really different. So, um, but you put it in, in chili, uh, put it in tacos, or in this case, um, different casseroles and things like that, and it works really, really great. It's less expensive, um, and it's a lot better for your heart. Any questions or any additional comments about our taco casserole? Yes. The recipe calls for red beans. These are light red kidney beans. Okay. okay. But you could use pinto beans if you prefer. You really don't have to use uh, a particular kind of bean if you have a, you already have one in the cabinet. I would just encourage you to make sure that you do start picking up the no salt added canned beans to use, you know, down the road for chili or for this or for anything else. And that's probably the key is trying to get those that do not have that salt added. Because it make, does make a big difference when you start coating up. <laughs> Do you use black beans in that place also? If you already have some on here that have salt, can you rinse them and sell any at all? Rinsing some uh, salted canned beans definitely would help. Yeah, I would encourage that. If you already got some, they're there and that definitely would help that. I really felt like that draining these two kinds of, of uh, the corn and the beans really helped with this recipe. I mean, you could also mess, you could still mess it up. If you put a lot of cheese on it, you put a lot of chips in it. So, uh, you know, I think one of the big keys is making that your own enchilada sauce. I think that was, is really helpful and it tastes good. So I would encourage you to do that. You can rinse the corn, you can rinse the beans, but don't rinse the chips. <laughs> yeah, have you tried that? Bad idea. Um, we're going to move along then to our very last recipe uh, and let Jared share some information about that. Yep, yep. I don't have all the healthy information about it, but I can definitely tell you about it. Um, we had a little bit of, an, of a problem in ordering our quinoa. Um, and our order guide said, red quinoa, ancient grain. So we're like, oh yeah, red quinoa is an ancient grain. So let's do that. Well, then when we got then, it, it ended up being uh, an actual mix of red quinoa and the ancient grains. So, um, uh, it, it's a really nice mixture, I'm not going to lie. Um, a lot of people made comments about bird feet. Fair, fair enough. Um, I did eat it after I, I cooked it up with the, um, uh, oh, where's it at? With the uh, chicken base. Yeah, with the chicken broth, sorry. Um, you know, it, it actually was really good. Um, I like lentils, which a lot of people don't like lentils. Um, it has, it has uh, well, I'll just read off the back what all it's got in it. Um, it's red quinoa, uh, millet seed, farro, uh, wheat berries, and lentils. Right? Bird seed. Um, I'm sorry? Bird seed. Bird seed, yes. And if, when you come up and look at it, you'll look at it and be like, oh my goodness, that looks exactly like bird seed. Um, you know, millet seed is something that they actually use quite a bit in bird seeds. Um, but anyway. Uh, they're great grains uh, to cook with. I will tell you that if you're used, if you use something like this, 
and you're and you've used and cooked quinoa in the past, you will not cook it the same. Okay. Um, I found it to be a little bit difficult because um, the quinoa was done, um, some of the other things were done, uh, but the lentils were not, right? Um, so stick very closely to the uh, directions on the package. Um, if you ask it, it's an Uncle, Brand's, an Uncle Ben's brand, um, so I'm sure you could probably find it in the store. I would honestly tell you, try it out. If you see it sometime, grab a box. Um, it probably won't be this big. Um, you know, we use it in a soup or something like that. Um, it really does add a nice um, element to a casserole, to a soup, um, different dishes like that when you have something like this. And plus, you're getting the benefit of the fiber um, and all the, all the uh, uh, minerals and vitamins that come along with it. Um, really, it's a basic recipe. Um, you start off with your base of, of, your, of your quinoa, um, and your tomatoes, and your spinach, and your seasonings. Um, you get that all mixed up, you get it spread out across your pan, um, and you cover it with a little bit of mozzarella cheese, you do your basil, uh, your fresh basil leaves across, and your sliced tomatoes, right? Um, and then you just bake it off. Um, it presents very pretty. I thought it looked probably like one of the best ones. Well, the other ones really didn't count because they were all covered in cheese, and they always look good when they're covered in cheese, right? <laughs> so it didn't really have that fair of an advantage going in, but it looked great. Um, the, the only issue that I found with it that I was a little bit worried about is um, quinoa and, and different grains like that have a tendency to be very earthy. And so when you add things that are very earthy on top of it, like spinach, um, it, can, it can kind of just be bland, right? Um, you can add mushrooms to it and things like that, uh, and it just kind of makes the whole dish bland. So it's good to add different things to it, like the tomatoes, um, like the basil, and the mozzarella. You're just going to have to try the recipe out. But what I would recommend doing is, if it's too earthy still at that, add other elements to it, okay? Increase maybe the tomatoes that you add to it. Um, I wouldn't start adding things like salt. Um, and you know, sour cream and different things like that, because I really don't think that's going to be beneficial in this dish. Um, I would really look for other vegetables and things like that to add into it. Um, that's just going to elevate that flavor profile a little bit more. All right, I see that a couple of you are starting to taste test. I hope you really enjoy it. Um, I know oftentimes in the month of February we hear about different dietary patterns for heart health, right? Um, one really popular one, and one that's got evidence to back it, is the Mediterranean diet. Is anyone familiar with the Mediterranean dietary pattern? All right, so the Mediterranean, oftentimes people think of Italy, and certainly this dish reminds me of Italy with the colorful tomatoes and the basil and the mozzarella, but you know, the Mediterranean dietary pattern also incorporates some of those other surrounding areas. And so we're talking about Greece, we're talking about Turkey, um, the Middle East. And so a lot of those um, cultures incorporate a lot of the same principles. And so some things that you'll notice about a Mediterranean um, dietary pattern is that they're full of plant-based foods. And so we're talking about vegetables and fruits, legumes, um, beans, lentils, those kind of things. And so those plant-based foods are full of fiber and antioxidants, all great for heart health. Another thing that you'll see with the Mediterranean dietary pattern is that it often replaces butter with healthier fats. Um, and so healthier fats should be things like olive oil and canola, and so getting those heart healthy fats in. Another thing that it does is it incorporates herbs and spices. And um, he just, Jared just mentioned that, right? And so instead of reaching for that salt when you feel like your dish needs something a little extra, reach for some of the other tools in the toolbox, right? And so reach for adding maybe you know a fresher tomato, choosing a different variety, maybe choosing to cook this recipe in the summer when tomatoes taste a little bit better. Um, trying you know different amounts of basil or uh, different ways of preparing that garlic. Um, trying different things with your herbs and spices and not always reaching for that salt shaker. You'll find that as you reduce sodium intake, it takes time for your taste buds to adjust. And adjust they will and you'll find that 
um, you know, normal salty things that you used to love will taste like looking a salt block or taking a drink of salt water. And so give yourself time, you'll find that these other flavors will really start to emerge, the sour, the sweet, the savory, and the, and the bitter. So enjoy those other flavors. Um, so can you see some of the things that we did with this, this recipe to increase the nutrient value? Kind of see some of the tricks up our sleeve? Um, so we've got the vegetables in this dish. We watched our uh, sodium amount with the kind of seasonings that we chose. And I always encourage you, don't just assume that your seasoning blends that you have at home are going to be low salt. Read that label. Um, those manufacturers, they're real, real tricky. And so make sure you're doing some label reading. Um, invest in your spice cabinet. Use those spices. It, and I will say it is an investment. Um, when I first got married, I was shocked at how much it cost to get my kitchen ready, to get my pantry set. But once you get some good herbs and spices that you enjoy, um, it, it really is a, a good investment for your health and, and certainly makes dinners um, taste better. And so why is the Mediterranean dietary pattern important? Um, if, if these are foods that you enjoy, um, and this is something that you'd be interested in adopting, um, it's been shown to help reduce that LDL cholesterol. You may be familiar with that LD cholesterol. Um, it, it's the lousy or the bad cholesterol. It's the kind that increases your risk of heart disease. And so Mediterranean diet with those fruits and vegetables and fiber, um, the healthier fats, that can help you reduce your LDL cholesterol. Um, it's also shown not only just to help improve cardiovascular health, but also to reduce your risk for cancer and reduce your risk for Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. So a lot of great reasons to eat heart healthy, right? It has benefits in other areas. So what y'all think? That tastes good? All right, I hope you make this recipe at home. And I know Rhonda, she's got a couple of last minute um, things to share with you. Any questions as she walks over? Yes, hon? You know all those spices you have in your cupboard? Yes. Why is anybody buying an Italian seasoning in the store? <laughs> Make it, and you can leave salt out. You can yep, have, yep. Um, any of those uh, taco seasoning. Make it. And if you need the recipe, so I'll share with you, for all for all y'all that didn't hear, make your own spice blends. You can make your own Italian spice blend. You can make your own taco seasoning. And if you don't know how, I'll do it, and she'll help you. We'll, we'll teach you how. I'll get you those recipes. It's easy, and once you make the investment, it's hard to go back. It just tastes better. Huh? It's on the Internet. And it's on the Internet. You just Google it. Google it. So, which one of these recipes are you going to try first? This first. last one? This, this fourth one? Four. Are you going to look for those ancient grains or just use quinoa with it? I'm going to have to use quinoa. Just use the quinoa? Okay. Uh, a couple of things that I'd like to share with you. You should have on your table, or you probably have on your table, uh, Metabolism Care. Uh, Dr. Heather Korn is our endocrinologist here with CMH. Uh, he's been with us since about July. Uh, and she's doing some uh, new things with adult weight management and metabolism. Uh, if you're interested, you can call her office and schedule an appointment with her. Um, it's, she's going to be looking at people that have a high BMI, uh, that have diabetes, that have a, a stroke risk, um, and that also certain types of cancer. So I've been working with Dr. Korn since she came in July. I really find her very easy to work with, really think she's very knowledgeable. Um, in these areas. So if you have some concerns about that, you can just call and schedule an appointment with her. You might also have to see me if you're over there too. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so that's available. And don't forget about our cardiac rehab. You know, the phase three. You can come have, you know, we should probably just relabel that. Come have fun with Jan. Because she, I think, goes to the phase three sessions frequently. So, also want to remind you to watch for Lynetta. If you haven't seen her, she's been on the KY3 Taste of the Ozarks early in the morning. She was there this morning. I don't know how she did that. She was there early this morning. She was back here. Uh, so uh, she has some additional tapings later this week that will be airing later in March. Um, but she's doing some of those. So um, we're really happy that she's uh, promoting uh, CMH as well as dietitian services that we have here. Really has some good recipes. If you watch, she had a really good 
filet with a red wine reduction sauce. It looked really good. How was that steak? Delicious. <laughs> and I will have to say, I can't do it alone. And so, big shout out to my dietitian team and Jared. They make it happen. <laughs> you know, those, those sessions are so quick and short, and you think, oh, it didn't take much time at all, but there is a lot that goes on in the background, believe me. Um, so, look for Lynetta on there. Um, so, March will be our next cooking class. So, March is, anybody know what it is? National Nutrition Month. And so, the dietitians chose a side of veggies because we really like for people to eat more veggies. So, we'll be doing some veggie only recipes. You thought these were veggie only recipes, probably, the first couple anyway. We're going to do some more next month and do you know, a lot of things about veggies because we think there's uh, certainly lots of nutrients in those. Most of us tend not to eat as many vegetables as we really should. So we'll all try to work on increasing our uh, vegetable intake. 